Keep believing in yourself, keep pushing yourself, keep doing more than you think you probably can. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Coach Tribe podcast. Today, we have with us a tremendous guest, a VIP guest, if you wish. He has more than 116,000 followers on Instagram. He's a viral marketing expert. His name is the one and only Dan Thomas. Dan, welcome. I am thrilled to have you here with us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. It is my pleasure. Today, we're going to talk about, Dan, something that you are really a pro in. We're going to talk about how to generate $10,000, pounds, euros, whatever you want, in 10 weeks without maybe a large following, without leads and without clients. And that is a big promise, Dan. How are we going to deliver that? It all starts with clarity. It all starts with understanding what you're offering, who is going to be receiving that, and how to really create a transformational outcome for those people so that they won't pay you high ticket prices after you've proven your value and your expertise. I I love that. So that they want to pay that. Isn't that a dream? Now, let's start then from level zero. You said you start with clarity. Can you tell us more about that? What is clarity? Clarity and messaging and your program and your offer. What are you talking about? I think most people struggle with exactly what it is that they're going to make. And a lot of people are multi-passionate, multi-talented people. So they usually have two options in their head. The first option is either a derivative of their nine to five, which is the thing they're trying to escape from, i.e., oh, you know, I've been doing this job for 10 years, so why don't I make a product around this job? And then they wonder why they never make it. Well, it's because they're not passionate about it because that's the very thing they're looking for. Um, or the other people are people that perhaps have an idea, but they also have lots of other ideas. And they think by creating one idea, all those other ideas to be given up. And now suddenly they're in a box that they can't escape from. So they tend to get all sort of with a laser pen over this thing. And instead of kind of like really specifically settling on one thing at a time, they tend to kind of do a lot of action, none of which is fully realized. And they struggle to kind of make any real traction, any kind of money in their business. So, you know, cl- when I say clarity, I I mean, what is the number one thing that you're going to make? What is the outcome that that thing creates for people? Who are the people that would be buying that thing? And then what is your sales mechanism for purchasing it? When you have those questions answered, you can scale anything. You can scale, you know, even the smallest idea up to seven figures and beyond. Sounds clear. But how do you, you know, when you don't have those answers, like where do you find the answers for those questions? The answers for those questions should at first come from you, particularly the outcome. So we talk about outcomes as in what is it that you are looking to create? What are you looking to help people with on a day-to-day basis? And a lot of people say, well, look, I just want to help people. And that's, that's not clear enough in the sense that it's not a tangible product. You need to know specifically what you're going to help people with, a tangible, measurable, ROI-driven outcome, something that I can observe. You know, is it losing five pounds in fat? Is it making $10,000 in 10 weeks? You know, is it going from depressed to ecstatic? Is it waking up feeling happier and healthier like what is the tangible outcome that you are helping people with that's the first question you need to answer and then you need to answer the question well who needs that outcome the most as in well if i'm helping people with lose five pounds in weight with fit workouts well not everybody is going to be into fit workouts certainly 80 year olds are going to be less likely to be interested in hit workouts so who is the most interested in your outcome who's the most interested in it and the great news is these outcomes they can come from you and and i encourage you all to really search within yourself and instead of trying to think well oh, i don't know what's popular right now or i don't know what the market's gonna buy or i don't know why i should or shouldn't be doing or someone told me this or someone told me that the answer to what outcome do you help people with should come from you. It should come from your heart, not just your head, also your heart. It's like, well, well, how do you want to spend the days of your life? Like, who do you want to be talking to? How do you want to spend it? So what is the thing that really lights you up? Helping people, yes, but in what way? Helping them in what way to do what thing? That's the start point. If you can really resolve that, then anything that you create is far more likely to be successful. What have you seen, Dan, that have been, you know, the biggest barriers to come up with these answers? Or like, what are those mistakes that people are doing at the beginning when they're trying to find their niche, to define what they're doing, who they're helping? What are those biggest mistakes? The biggest reason why people struggle to do this is either, well, it's usually actually driven by a fear of committing to a result. So most people can explain 
roughly what it is they want to help people with. But what they can't do is commit to a result. And anytime you speak to a result or you ask them to prompt them to commit to a result, they kind of shy away from that. Which means that anything that they come up with is just really kind of like airy-fairy, not very tangible, not something anymore. I help you, you know, feel better every day. Okay. I uh, Now I feel better every day. Now, so the question now what is a really good question when you're thinking about your outcome. Because, you know, if your outcome is, oh, I, I help people wake up with more gratitude. Now what? Okay, I've woken up with more gratitude. How has that changed my life? So I encourage you all, like, you need to create to really commit to a specific outcome. You need to go, I am going to take you from here to here. That thing is going to be measurable or tangible and I can see it. Now, that's going to be scary for you because you're going to be like, well, yeah, but Dan, number one, firstly, I haven't helped anyone do that before. So you're going to say, well, yeah, but how can I do that? Because I haven't helped anyone do that. And then number two, you're going to say, I don't know if I can do it. Or what if some of my students can't do it? I don't think I can do that for all of my students. And the answer to the, both of those questions is whatever outcome that you commit to is based on an ideal student doing all the work and listening to all the advice that you do. That's what your outcome is. So we help people go from zero to a million views in 90 days. We get a lot of our students to from zero to a million views in 90 days. Not all of our students go from zero to a million views in 90 days. There's a lot of extenuating circumstances. But if they continue to listen to our advice, then they will get there. Some people are faster, some people are slower. But your outcome should be based on a best case scenario. I ideal student doing the work. I feel like this is exactly what me, many others listening, you know, needed to hear. So... Yeah, love that. What blocks a lot of people here is they're worried about charging money for that. Because they're like, well, damn, I've never done that before for somebody else. I'm worried about charging money for that. So what I would say to people is, well, firstly, when you first start out, if you haven't done something before, like if you've done it for yourself, you, sh you need to do it for yourself first, right? If you've done it for yourself, you've never helped anyone else do it before, then from a pricing standpoint, you're going to start low and maybe even free. And you're going to start bringing on some people initially, charge them not very much, work with them very, very closely, be super dedicated to the those people and work with those people to get the result. And then as you work with more people, you develop a more robust method. And as the, the method becomes more and more robust, you can step further and further back from it and instead put it into a self-service program because now that method is more of us. And the worst case scenario here is you give someone their money back, at which point you're back to where you are right now, because right now you're not charging anyone for anything anyway. The worst case scenario is giving their money back. But in that scenario, you would have learned a hell of a lot and that would have moved you forward. So there is no backwards here. There is no downside. There is only upside. You just need to kind of put a flag in the ground and say, this is what I'm going to help people with. And then, you know, I'm going to commit to a real result and get started. No way back. No excuses now. You've heard that, you know, all of the sort of objections, questions have been obliterated by Dan right now. So we just have to get into it. Now, last question on this sort of clarity pillar, if you wish. How long should people dedicate, you know, to define that before? we get it to the next step i think clarity is an interesting one if you feel like you're close then you should get stuck if you feel like you're swimming all over the place then you know you want to kind of like reflect on that a little bit but the thing that's going to really ultimately get you over the line is action taking there are so many things that you can't outthink and you tell yourself you can outthink this problem but realistically you're not going to know exactly what this is going to look like until you get started you put something, the flag in the ground, particularly when it comes to offers. So you might come up with an outcome and say, well, look, I want to help people, you know, lose five pound in five weeks. And then you put it out there and no one's interested. So that the offer itself might not be something that people are that interested in. So you might have to tune the offer. You're still going to help people lose weight, but it might now be, you know, a different amount of weight in a different amount of time with a different type of exercise or a different type of plan. Maybe people are more interested in nutrition than they are in workouts. Who knows? Depends on your audience. But none of the answers to this question are going to come from your own head. Like you can't outthink how other people think. So you're just going to have to put something out there and see. Think of this as a starting point, right? It's not a permanent tattoo. Whatever you choose now is not what you're going to end up doing forever. You know, you're going to have multiple offers. You might have multiple businesses doing multiple different things. We have multiple businesses doing multiple different things, but we only build one business at a time. Like you can only build one business at a time. So pick the thing you want to start with, get some points on the board, make some money, iterate that thing, develop that thing, and then you can bring in another thing when you know enough to be able to do that. The Code Fed podcast is powered by Pensite. I want to take this opportunity to tell you more about Pensite and how much value it can provide you and your coaching business. 
Fed Aside is an all-in-one platform for coaches and educators that enables you to quickly and easily build a highly credible page and sell your knowledge with one-to-one -one sessions, group coaching, courses, q and A, digital products and bundles. Payments, scheduling, video calling, client communications and everything else is taken care of. All it takes is five minutes to set up and it's free. It's the smartest way to kickstart your coaching business. Sign up to Pensite today at P-E-N-S-I-G-H-T.com. I love that. And this idea, you know, about action, it's what keeps you going. If, if you are stuck in thinking, there's only always more to think about. And it's that movement that brings in the progress. Now, given that promise of this episode is that we, we said we will try to give people the best tools so that they can get to that 10K in 10 weeks. Now we are clear on our niche. What is the next thing that we need to make happen in order to get that money our way? Well, the next thing you need to do is we need to start attracting people to us. You can do this through social media content. That's obviously what we advocate because we're a viral marketing agency. In theory, you can do that with ads, you can do that with a bunch of other stuff, right? You might already have an existing network, an existing face, people on a podcast. But the next thing we need to do is we need to start you know, sharing our intentions with the rest of the world. And then we need to start validating whether the rest of the world thinks these are interesting and products that they would buy. It's very, very rare that you'll ever come up with an offer that everybody kind of jumps up and goes, yes, I want that straight away. I actually think a lot of people deliberately sabotage themselves by trying to make offers deliberately different than the rest of the market just for the sake of trying to be different or, you know, coming up with, you know, oh, I don't want to do guru stuff or whatever. It's like, yeah, but you, you know, you're just, all you're doing is creating offers that no one wants because there's a reason why people want. The next thing you've got to do is you've got to put your attention out there. You've got to validate the offers that you have going. So I don't build anything. You don't, don't ever build a course or a program until you validated that people want to buy it. Just put it out there. Now, we love putting it out there in workshops. That's our favorite way to do it because workshops are really good experiences. They're interactive, so you can connect directly with your ideal customer. You can talk to them. You can get their feedback both before and after the workshop. They're non-committal, so you can run a workshop just as a free thing to get practice in. It's excellent practice for interpersonal skills, sales skills, communication skills. And of course, if you add a lot of value in that workshop and you blow someone's mind, then that person can very easily then want to go and invest in you without the need for months and months of content nurturing and very, very extended, very over designed funnels with millions of steps and, you know, things like value ladders where you need multiple lead magnets into low ticket, into medium ticket, into high ticket products, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We literally sell $5,000 products to strangers in 40 minutes on workshops that we you know, we've never even meet, met these guys before and you do it right so we love workshops as a mechanism because they help prove whatever it is that you are thinking about and get that feedback and then once you find a workshop that's really really popular that's about a topic that people are really super interested in that they really really want then you know you can then turn that into an offer and the offer is likely to be very successful so the starting point of your offer is actually the validation of the workshop that you come up with. That you can validate your offer in different ways. You can validate an offer through stories, through DMs, through loads of different places. But you, you have to validate an offer before you build any course or a program. And you have to ensure that people are actually going to buy whatever it is you want to work on. Most people will go straight in and they'll go, okay, I've got an idea. And then they'll lock themselves away for six months to develop a course. But because that idea is not very well thought out, the course then gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And now suddenly it's not even a course. It's actually just a download of everything they know. Not even a course anymore. It's way too bloated. I'm only going to help you make money and then you'll try, try and teach me how to make money in 50 different ways. It's just way too bloated. And then they spend so long on it and they're so overcommitted to it that when it then comes time to launch, they're either terrified of launching it or they, uh, they do launch it, but they don't launch it in a way that does in any way justice to the effort. I.e. they put one post out and they go, oh my God, I've got a new course. Who wants it? And no one says anything. And then they give up on the course and they reset the whole thing put another six months on the clock and start all over again, which is the worst possible thing you could do when actually you could literally be making money, high ticket money in the next 24 hours just by creating a good offer. I came up with an idea and I went on a live and 
talked to some of my followers on a live and I said, hey guys, do you think it's a good idea? It was called like the, uh, what was it called? The Influencers Instagram. And it was a course about how to develop your brand as an influencer. I went on a live and a bunch of people said, yeah, I, I, that sounds like an awesome idea. So as I was on the live, I built a landing page and all the landing page said was, this idea is so new, it doesn't have a landing page. And then underneath it was a checkout for $1,000. And I closed, it didn't even have a landing page. It was just an idea. But the offer was such a good offer that people are like, yeah, I'll buy that right now. I really appreciate the idea of like test before you create, test before you build. I yeah. love it. Validate whatever it is that you want to build before. And also, it's a good reminder that so many times we're stuck in the details. Look at you. You didn't have the landing page. And you sold it because there was demand. So many times we think, oh, but it's not ready, but it needs more. It needs that. It needs to be perfect. This idea of perfectionism, again, is I know a big, big barrier for many coaches and creators. So that was very good to be reminded of. Have you ever experienced anything that's perfect in life? No. It doesn't exist. It literally doesn't exist. When you say, when people say, oh, I just want it to be perfect. It doesn't exist. It can't exist. How could it exist? If, if something was perfect, then that would be the only thing everyone in the world would buy, right? Obviously isn't the case. What, you know, we all buy different vacuum cleaners. Why do we buy different vacuum cleaners when all these vacuum cleaners just suck up stuff? There is literally no difference in the function of these vacuum cleaners. So next time when you want to create your offer, just look at your vacuum cleaner and reminders. Why does everybody have a different vacuum cleaner? Does anyone really understand that? It's, you know, it's, there is no such thing as perfect. And anyone who talks about like, oh, you know, I just want things to be perfect. Like I've never witnessed a perfectionist create something perfect. So now that that's out of the equation and don't have time to wait for that perfectionism, then before we get into the offer, this signature program, I want to ask just, you know, what are those must know things about workshops? Of, of course, there are questions around how to create the workshop, how to promote the uh, workshop, you know, get people to sign up, to show up. What are the must know things when we, you know, like make that step of creating the workshop? What do we have to know? The first thing your workshop needs to be, again, is a, a very, very tight tangible outcome and it needs to be something that people can do right now and it can't be hypothetical it has to be practical so a practical outcome that they can do right now potentially on the workshop is even better so if you can like say to people yeah you know you can just go ahead and create this post right now and then generate a whole bunch of interest let's go ahead and do it right now everybody let's write this thing let's do this thing let's interact help them actually build the thing it needs to be a pretty very very small but very powerful action that they can implement instantly that will get them instant result. That's what your workshop should be about. So we have a workshop around how to plan 30 days of content in 30 seconds with AI. And we literally just show people the prompts that they need to type in the chat GPT in order to build plan content. And it blows people's mind. Absolutely blows people's mind. It's not complicated or at least it's not complicated for us, but for them, it's completely new and they've never done it before. So for them, it's really, really significant. We just need to make sure that I think so many people do strategic workshops you know workshops are going to say well well here's the three steps that i took to be able to get to wherever i got to and that's all very interesting and relevant but at the same time it's like completely unactual there's literally nothing you can do with that information as a consumer of that workshop i think people have become very fatigued with that kind of thing i all i hear you know and i love it like the word of this podcast episode so far is action 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 and i love this idea of you know make it practical make it tangible, have people leave with something at the end of that workshop. And that's probably what's going to make them want to come back for more because now they have something they can look at, touch or like utilize. And what about the promoting phase? Because we said, you know, maybe I'm just in the beginning and I don't have that followers yet or like the audience built already. How can I promote a workshop if I don't have that yet? Well, I want to just foot at the end of the workshop by saying the reason why it's important to help you actually do something in reality is because the market is very very saturated i mean literally you scroll through your feed and it's add 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 i'm gonna help you do this i'm gonna help this add, add. a lot of people have become very sort of tuned out to offers in general and they've become very skeptical of people that provide those offers and so what i love about workshops is they get to have an awesome experience with you they get to see how awesome you are and then they're like oh this person's for real so now my trust in this person is much much higher and now i'm much more malleable to receiving offers and 
and opportunities to work with them. Whereas if you just try and do it cold, and you try and sell some more cold, not only are you in a hyper competitive market, you're also in one where there's a lot of trepidation, rightfully so, about whether that's happened. And most people have been burned with courses they've bought that they do nothing with. How many courses have you bought that you do nothing with, Murray? Enough. And unfortunately, some that I didn't even start or maybe I started. No, totally. Like, you know, I've seen people pay like $3,000 for a course that they never start. So everyone has logins for courses, ebooks, micro products that they've never ever used or gone to. So people have been burned a lot. So that's why I love workshops. They really, really are a differentiator. In terms of how you market that workshop then, obviously if you have an existing audience, you can market to that existing audience. If you don't, there are so many ways that you can reach new audiences very, very quickly. Um, for one, you could join someone else's Facebook group as a sponsored person, hang out on someone's Facebook group for a while, add a lot of value, approach the admin and say, hey, Mr. Admin, you know, I'd love to run a workshop in your group about this. It's really aligned to what your people in your workshop are looking for. Would it be okay if I ran this workshop and ran a live in your workshop? You could collaborate on an Instagram live with somebody else and generate generate a lot of leads for your workshop. You could do a podcast like we're doing right now and promote your workshop in a podcast. You could just walk down the street with a t-shirt on and promote your podcast, right? There, there are so many ways to get the word out about these workshops and it will build. You know, at first it'll be a few people and then it'll be 10 people, 20 people, 50 people, 100 people. And you can keep ramping, 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 ramping up. Now, there are options to get people in. I got it. Let's assume we got those people in. What do we tell them at the end of the workshop? What's the call to action? Do we already have some sort of idea of the program in mind? Does that program have to exist? Like, what is that link between the workshop, the creation of the signature program and the call to action? So the first time you do a few workshops, we kind of, what we recommend is you start off by validating. So the workshops are really just kind of small groups where you kind of talk about different things and you see what people are Really respond to and you see what people kind of then ask you for more information or get really really hyped up so we do some testing at first then once we start getting a sense of well which workshops really resonating with people which one's getting really high show up rates which one's getting loads of engagement which ones are getting people like asking to work with you then we know that your program is then going to be a natural extension of whatever that works so for example, let's say your workshop was on how to plan 30 days of content in 30 seconds. Your program could then be how to create and launch your entire course and market your entire course with AI in under seven days. I.e., the workshop gave them the first step. I've got a bunch of content, but now, but I still don't have anything to sell. Well, guess what? I have a program that finishes off formula. Yeah, your program is a natural extension and expansion of your workshop. That's simple. And how... Let's say at that point, I assume, of course, again, you don't have the program. How do you confidently make that call to action for people, you know, to join, to check it out? What's the sort of timeline? What if I, they want to join in that second? Like, what is the, how do you go about that when you don't have something concrete? You sell it. You say it's going to be ready in 30 days. It's going to be selling for one and a half thousand dollars. If you join right now for 997, you can get immediate access to that. Save yourself $500 and it'll be available in 30 days. Mm -hmm whole built, you could have a program that releases content week by week. And we've done that before. So 10 by 10, the, the very program you're talking about right now was pre-sold and then built with live students in place. Now, the reason why that's actually a good thing, you might say, well, Dan, that sounds both stressful and, you know, hey, but what about the students? We already had the outline of 10 by 10 on our page. We were already drawn in and pretty much knew how it was going to work. But it was actually beneficial to build it with students in place because each module that then came out was then tailored to student feedback. It improved the quality of the program by building it with live students in place. And you can, you can say that in the workshop. You can say, yep, I'm developing a new program. It's coming out in 30 days. It's going to be doing this. If you get in now, you get an early bird discount. And then if you make enough sales to justify the creation of the program, you go and then create the program. If you make one two sales and you think, you know what, I was I was hoping for more sales, then you can just give the money back to those people and say, well, look, we're actually, you know, we're going to delay the program for a little bit and just give the money back to them. Again, another like, you know, sort of mind-blowing information <laughs> because you don't have to have that, it and just sell it before I, and that and should be the way. If anyone comes to you and they're not happy with the program, you give them their money back, right? It's exactly the same situation. Got but it. And you, now, if you give them their money back, then, you know, you're, you're just a square one. You're at the same point that you started off with but you're much, much further ahead because there'll be plenty of people. You know, a lot of people work with us just because they want to be close to us. 
And you'd be surprised about how many people just want to work with you to be close to you. To be close to you in the sense that they just and said there is a lot of a lot of people are going to pay you just to be close to you, just to work with you at all. Mm -hmm. And you know the syllabus of a lot of programs. You know none of these things are going to be that drastically different than the rest. How you do your thing will not be drastically different than what's already been done before. Most programs are derivatives of other things. The thing that's the real differentiator is you. Are you and no one is youer than you. And that is your right, how you help people do the work and apply the program. You know that's you, the differentiator. The actual syllabus of the program is very likely to be similar to what you've learned previously from somewhere else, or what you've done, which was based on what someone else taught you. Right? Everything is derivative. Again, yeah. is that action, action, action? It's like also help them to take the next step, to make that first reel, to make their first program, make their first step. I love this, you know, sort of reminder again it's not about what you teach them all the lessons how you did it it's about helping them make it themselves and i think that again super good to have in mind we want your students to take action on what you teach them okay so a lot of people end up making programs and they make the program and it's way too big way 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 too big and it's so big they're like they think that if they put more information in their program that the program is therefore worth more, right? Oh, it's got eight modules, so now it's worth, you know, $2,000 instead of $1,000. Like, that's not what makes a program worth money. What makes a program worth money is the action that students take and the results. So the shorter you can make your program, the better. Reels Millionaire, as a program, the one that, you know, we promote to get people from zero to a million views in 90 days, in the actual portal, there's not actually a massive amount of information in there, but it's the most successful viral marketing program that exists today. And the reason being is we only give you what you need to know. That's it. And we just want you to work on the information that's in there. See, your program doesn't need to be big at all. If you can get me to $10,000 with in a two hour video over a 30, 40 hour program, I'll take the two hour video. I'll still pay you the same amount of money. Quality over quantity. Now that we talked about clarity, now we tested those workshops. We know, you know, something definitely works. We have that winner workshop. And now what's the next step? Do we take the lessons and create a, a program? And how do we create our first program? Like how many weeks, months should it be? How do we structure it? How do we price it? You've run your program. Uh, so you've run your workshop. You've shown that people are super, super interested in that. Your program is then a natural extension expansion of the workshop, right? It's to, it's to take a little nugget of what they've just learned and then, you know, stack a whole bunch of other stuff together in order to, be able to create an awesome outcome. That's what your program is. Like there is no specific length to a program but market wise most people don't want to commit to more than 12 weeks worth of work and 12 weeks worth of work is you know a fairly big commit unless you're in the fitness space in which case it's slower and more protracted and you can't really speed that up but in general if you're a service-based business you should be getting people to some kind of significant result within 12 weeks so if you then take that time scale you should be able to then plan your program around well the first part of programs tend to be mindset orientated modules i.e priming stuff you know stuff that removes confirmation bias stuff that helps people get there out of their own head stuff that removes blockers stuff that's going to help people you know become more malleable to receive the information that you're about to deliver them so i always recommend within a program start with some mindset stuff just to make sure that people are thinking right because, you know, if someone buys your program and, but they're bringing a whole load of confirmation bias, and a whole lot, a whole load of blockers in, they only see the negative instead of the positive. There's no program in the world that is going to actually get them their results until their mindset shifts. So you have to shift their mindset. But what will happen is those people will blame the program for not getting them there, even though it's actually their mindset that's the issue. So, you know, start off with a mindset module, then start off with, you know, a prepping module in terms of like, well, what do I need to put in place in order to be able to get ready to do this thing? Then turn, then, you know, work with an application model, an application module, and then, you know, work with a scaling. So if we put that out into 10 by 10, for example, it starts off with the mindset piece, which is all about how to think about money, how to you know, think about networking and talking to people, how to understand, you know, engagement and conversations, how to understand yourself, right? And then we go into a prep work thing, which is, you know, this is how the module is going to work. This is how it works out. This is what you're going to need. These are all of the different artifacts that you're going to learn. 
this is how you orientate yourself. And, you know, here, if there's anything specific that they might need for it, now's the time to get them to get it. Then you go into the actual implementation, which is how to run the workshop, scale the workshop, so on and so on. And then you work into the scaling bit, which is now I'm at $10,000 in 10 weeks. How do I then get 10K every single month after that? You know, most programs structure out. There you have it. The creation of a high ticket coaching program in just three minutes. I don't Again, it's not complicated. It really isn't complicated again keep it as short as you possibly can when you say short so do you refer to the information load given or also the timeline like let's say three weeks ten weeks all weeks if you are working with those people directly in an accelerator slash cohort model then you might build your program out in a week by week order i.e it would read week one do this week two do this week three do this week four do this if your program is more open-ended you're not working with them directly and it's more you know maybe they just join Q&A calls and there's not direct coach access you would probably just build it out sequentially but at periodically you might mention that each module should take a certain amount of time so maybe say module one and you, sh and you say you know within the course yeah you know just you know this module you should be spending once two weeks on this module and after that you can move on to the next step. it's up to you got course. it something important to remember when you're building your programs is what is the delivery mechanism for the program so reels millionaire our zero to a million views in 90 days. The portal doesn't need a lot of information in it because we work with you directly, one-to-one. -one. So if I gave you more and more and more stuff to do in the portal, then, you know, you might end up going off on a tangent. So the syllabus is relatively short because it's more one-to-one. -one. If it's self-hosted, self-learning, you you probably, you're going to need a bit more of a robust syllabus because that syllabus is going to need to include answers to objections, FAQs, and a whole bunch of other stuff that people will have in their head. You're not, because you're not connected with, to them directly, you're going to have to ask that out front within the syllabus so it really depends on the delivery model got it and the last question on this dan would be for a starting a coach that's just getting started what sort of delivery method or structure do you recommend for for this coaches on their first program like should it be weekly calls plus some um, maybe an online course or like what do you think would be an optimal package if you've never run your program before or you've never coached people before you should be doing the highest level hands-on work with your students that is humanly possible and the reason for that is you need to learn as much as possible in as short time as possible you want those students to get as good a result as possible so that you can create some great testimonials that are then going to help you sell it for more money the next time around um, and, but also you need to be iterating your syllabus as much as possible because essentially you're in a alpha slash beta test at this point so Anything that you come up with, you know, in your initial stab of what you think your program will look like, that syllabus is going to change a lot once you show it to students. You know, when we, when we came up with Rules Millionaire, we knew exactly what the phases were and we knew exactly what the actions were that people would be able to take. What we didn't know is the blockers. We didn't know the day-to-day, -day, you know, stumbling blocks that people would come across. We didn't know actually how e the implementation of those actually manifest for a student and you know is it as simple as what we just said or are there some nuances to it all of that stuff is stuff that you need to be super focused on learning so i recommend in the early days even though you won't be charging a lot of money you should be as close and committed to those students success possible because what will make your program worth more money is two things the first one is a robust repeatable method that works and the second one is a whole host of student success stories if you have those two things, you can sell your model for literally any price. Pick a number. That's simple, but it's not that simple because you do have to have that success repeated on a uh, repeatable method and those success stories. And just again, last question with on this would be because I'm trying to read, you know, our listeners' mind, and I know some of them are asking, okay. But how many times, you know, they want that blueprint, like how many calls a week should I have for how many weeks? Like, is there, again, something that you've seen working well? It depends. Firstly, it depends on the length of the program and how long you think it's going to take people to actually get to the result. And so if your program is 12 weeks long, then it would be 12 weeks, of course. One call a week is absolutely fine. But you should be, D if you're in the really early stage, you should also be DMing those students and really kind of looking after those students and learning from those students. Ah the same amount of time. There is always a fine line between support and pandering. And, you know, it's kind of like you need to kind of like 
it's a sort of if you love them, set them free philosophy. Where it's like if you answer every single one of their tiny little questions and if you're constantly doing more and more and more and more calls, not only are they not going to be able to answer those calls, but you end up doing the work for them and that isn't empowering that person. So you need to be able to give them homework and then have time to implement that homework and then for you to then reconvene and review that homework. It's depending on your model, I would say base it on how long it would take to do the homework. Again, in Reels Millionaire, we need like seven days worth of videos to really kind of make any sort of informed feedback for the next time we meet with our students. So we meet once a week and then they do seven days and then we've got lots of data to be able to look at and... Whereas if we met every sort of three days, they just they just wouldn't have had enough time to post enough videos to be able to tell us anything. So there'd be no point. It wouldn't be helping them because they would end up getting more and more tasks so they weren't likely to actually action. And it wouldn't help us because we can't make informed judgments. You heard that. You know, adjust to, to your goal, your timeline. And an important lesson is you want them to be able to do what you're teaching them by themselves at the end of the program. And you want those people to be empowered and to have everything they need to do it themselves because I think that's where the true power of a coaching program is, right? It has to be. I think a lot of people think that one-to-one -one gets better results than group. We do group predominantly. We do short one-to-one catch-ups with students, but what we don't do is like hour long, you know, 90 minute long, and we only take on one-to-one -one students at any one moment of time because I actually don't really believe in extended one-to-one -one coaching models. For one, there's just way too much information for that students to take on. Like imagine if we were meeting for 90 minutes every week. Could you imagine how many actions you'd come out with and how many would you would actually do? It's too much information. It's too long. Uh, number two, it's very exhausting for you as a coach. And number three, in a purely one-to-one -one model, the student can only learn from the coach and they have no peers. And it's peers that really teach you the most. It's other people going through the same journey at the same time time, you know, getting results, getting failures, inspiring you, supporting you, and understanding your exact position. It's really important to have a peer network for your students. So I actually find, you know, a lot of our students learn an awful lot through group sessions, you know, and I'm a strong believer in group, always have been. Which again is why I like workshop models, right? Because workshops are groups. There, There is no right or wrong business model, you know? Some people might do everything on the DM. Some people might do it in ads. Some people might do it in workshops. Some people might do it purely through organic content marketing and then, you know, into the DM and into sales schools. There's no right or wrong thing, but there will be a preference that you have. And I encourage you to design the business that you love around the things that you love. Right? So pick the thing that you are most interested in and are most passionate about doing and then make that the business model that you use to grow your business. You said it so well done. And now I'm aware that we're getting towards the end of the episode. And the only part I think left that I would love, you know, to, to have your thoughts on would be we know the niche, we created a workshop, we have the signature program that is validated, but how do we make the sales? How do we transfer the leads from the workshop to buying the program like what's that missing point that we have in this well obviously you can be selling directly in the workshop so you know you can offer them your pitch and then talk to them about your program and then sell in the program you can sell in the follow-up part of the workshop you can take them into a facebook group or you could just follow up by email and then you know continue to talk about the program in the email you can of course sell directly through your social media that's a combination of obviously posting wins like wins and testimonials are the, are the biggest sales mechanism you could ever use like we post wins into our stories from our Reels Millionaire students almost every day and they generate so many DMs because now you're creating this huge FOMO and other people want it. So, you know, again, another reason why focusing on student wins is such a powerful way to scale your coaching business because they create the content that is most convincing in order to be able to generate the most sales in the back end as well. Um, and then, of course, through the content itself that you post into your social and understanding the difference between growth content, which is value-added content, and sales content, which is transformational content. So if you're making growth content right now, which is content that has a lot of value, lots of tutorials, lots of really good stuff, that stuff will get you followers, it won't get you clients. Because if you're constantly solving someone's problem, it, cr it never creates a need from that person to buy from Oh, hey, I'm Dan. This is how you do everything. So you should go in cycles between growth content and sales content. And sales content needs to be much more around transformations and journeys and identifying, you know, why something might not be working for someone and what 
they should be thinking about in order to be able to try and make it work. Much more about the end user and about the position they're in than it is about you constantly showing up and going, this is a solution to that. This is a solution to that. This is a solution to that. Again, great for generating followers, but you need a change in content strategy when you're in a sales window if you want to make it. And understanding the difference between growth content and sales content is very, very important. And this is why a lot of creators even can amass really, really big followings and stay totally broke because they're constantly making growth content and not sales content. Don't understand the difference. Creators all the time. I've met creators with like 300,000 followers that are broke. The we difference also between... had some content strategy tips from the master himself. Yeah. So we have the whole package. Literally, the last question, Dan, that I want to ask you is, because I know we all have our definitions of high ticket uh, clients, high ticket pricing. What does high ticket offer mean for you? Like, what's the sort of price that we're looking at? A lot of people will vary in their interpretation of what high ticket is. And some people say, oh, it's this. And some people say it's that. To me, what high ticket is, is a number that stretches you and it feels high to you. So in the early days, maybe $1,000 feels high to you. That's high ticket. But once you start selling loads of $1,000, it's not high to you anymore. So what's high to you next? Maybe it's $3,000. Maybe it's $5,000. Maybe it's $15,000. You know, I've seen many, many people selling stuff way over 10K, 20K, 30K. You know, I always say, look, just keep yourself in a mindset of high, right? as in as much as you can. It should be something that, it leaves you slightly uncomfortable and asks you to stretch yourself. So whatever it is, that's high ticket. Sounds good to me. Now, this episode, Dan, has been fantastic. I'm looking forward to re-listen to this again and again and to learn the lessons for myself. But I really want you, Dan, to tell, you know, people, how can you further help them? Where can they find you? Why should they reach out to you? Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, come find me at I'm Dan Thomas. I am Dan Thomas on Instagram. There's a lot of one crazy stuff on there. You will be surprised. And you can also find us, our company, at socialboom.com. So we run a membership that you can join where we help you rapidly grow and monetize your social. We share all the things you would normally pay thousands of dollars for literally one dollar you can come over and join socialboom.com for one dollar come over and join and see what we've got we have guides templates scripts courses and more about how to rapidly grow and monetize your service-based business and a very thriving community to help you there as well as well as live support and live coaching all throughout as well so we're not gonna love it i just want to encourage all the listeners listening to this right now to go follow dan i am dan thomas to go check out his social boom porter his programs i can assure you just because i know i am there i am using their stuff that it is incredibly valuable it has upped my game a lot and there is so much value so easily explained so if you found value in this call which i'm sure you did since you're still here make sure to follow check out and get more from them because it's literally like really good stuff so that is my recommendation now thank you so much dan this has been fabulous amazing mind-blowing i am really honored and grateful so thank you and thank you dear listeners for sticking till the end dan any last word keep believing in yourself keep pushing yourself keep doing more than you think you probably can see you all for the next episode of the coach tribe podcast have a good one hope you enjoyed this episode we'll be releasing every wednesday so make sure to subscribe and write us five stars where you're listening to this show to give others a chance to discover it too